We're going to talk about a gentle touch, a gentle touch, and um, it's interesting. Right. Next week, I, is it? It's Father's Day next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> because the last of our fruits of the spirit is self-control. So I want all the dads to be here. So they exercise self-control. Amen. You gals don't need it. You're 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 cool, but the guys are. Yeah, they don't. I don't know. Father's Day and self-control. What a mix. <laughs> Thanks for the oatmeal. A gentle touch. Great worship, huh? Yeah. Just you know, it's just great to be here. Uh, I don't. I say that all the time, but really, it's. Um, I look forward to Sundays. I mean, I, I really do. I look forward to being here and worshiping and just having fellowship with all of you and saying hi and looking at your smiling faces and the miracles that God's doing. And it's uh, it's all good. And I was kind of thinking about, you know, people that retire. And I think to myself, I wonder if I can last to 90. And I thought, I don't, I don't know why not. I mean, you know... Um, I've lasted this long so far, so um, I'm going to kind of keep plugging along and plugging along and all that kind of stuff. Well, anyway, this morning we're going to look at a gentle touch. Uh, and before we do, let's, let's pray and again just thank God for the wonderful time. Father, I just thank you for our time of worship. I thank you for our time of praise and prayer. Uh, as we lift up the name of Jesus, we lift up the name of Jesus. You are wonderful. You're our counselor. You're our mighty God. You're our everlasting Father. We're so grateful and so thankful for being here. And thank you for answered prayer, for miracles. Miracles for Ray, I. Arlene, Chris Grimminger, uh, Linda Sprague, Dave Devy, Larry Cook. Father, miracle upon miracle upon miracle. We're so grateful and thankful you hear our prayers. We have the power of prayer. Thank you. Thank you, we can pray for one another. And wow, that you answer our prayers. Thank you. Now, Holy Spirit, I ask you to speak in and through me, teach in and through me, that the scriptures come off these pages today, that we grow and learn according to your word. And I ask your blessing on this time together in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Amen. Galatians 5, 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Patience, again, underline that or circle that. <laughs> Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. No law. The question is, uh, as we think of that we're going to look at today, gentleness, that's the eighth uh, fruit of the Spirit. Um, you know, you, you think about it, and it's kind of a really a misunderstood word when you think about gentleness. Because if you ask somebody, um, will gentleness win a football game for you? Uh, or can you smash a baseball with a bat if you're gentle? Um, we kind of think, what does this word really mean? And um, then the big question is, how does gentleness fit into our lives? How, how to be a gentle person? And so oftentimes, I think it's really, really misunderstood. I really do. Um, if I can give kind of an illustration, you all ride horses, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who, else, who else rides horses in here? This young lady right here, this young lady <laughs> over here. Well, way back in when, we had a horse called Shadrach. Shadrach. 17 hands high. We had him in our backyard, right. <laughs> believe it or not. But that was before all of this growth came in. I mean, there was actually trees and there was places to go and fields to ride in. And, and I remember Christy, I think, I don't know, four years old when she started riding Shadrach, maybe five. And she would just kind of walk around, Terry would help her out. And, uh, but what's interesting was we went to Lake Patterson, east of the mountains, and uh, Sun Mountain Lodge. And uh, so the kids wanted to go horseback riding, Mike and Jeff and Christy and Terry and for some reason, I didn't want to go. Uh, they all went. So Lake Patterson was right there, and guess what I did? Fish. I fished. So they're all taken off. So anyway, they're all on this horseback ride, and here's Christy. I think she's six years old, and all of a sudden, her horse just shoots out. Something scared her horse, and I mean, it just 
blasted out. Goes down the trail, passes all the other horses. She's six years old. And the horse is just going nuts. It's going crazy. And so Ranger Rick, he chases up, comes right beside her. Chris, Chris, pull back on the reins and say, whoa. So here's a six-year-old girl. The horse is going 100 miles an hour. She goes, whoa, pulls back. The horse stops. Just kind of, you know, kind of calms down. I don't know what to do. Would it be a trot next or something from a real fast pace? Kind of a trot walk. And I thought about this, and it's a beautiful picture of gentleness under control. Power under control. Power under control. When you think about gentleness, what we have to think about is, you might want to write this down, power under control like a horse. Once it's, it's big, powerful, strong, but once it's under control, we have all of its power under control. All right? So I want you to think about that this morning. As we think about that, and we exercise gentleness and this power under control, I want you to think about anger under control. Anger under control. Emotions under control. And bold print, our words under control. And then our actions all under God's control. So when we think about gentleness, we're thinking about power under God's control in our lives. I mean, a lot of power, a lot of power. And of course, the greatest example of all is Jesus Christ himself. Gentle and yet... <laughs> All powerful, amen? All powerful. So today I'm going to take uh, the word power and each letter, and we're just going to kind of walk through this understanding of power and how it fits into each one of our lives daily. So number one, P for power is our personality. Our personality. Gentle people have their personalities under God's control. Personalities. And when you think about personalities, what you want to think about is character traits, character traits in our, our life. You think about character traits, I, I wrote down some like honesty, integrity, humility, sense of humor, compassion. There's a lot more, but th these are what our character is built on, right? And if this negative character, you get rudeness, you get anger, temper tantrums, vindictiveness, you get all the kind of negatives, you, you know, the negatives there. And so we want to make sure that our character is positive and our character traits always come out when we're dealing with people almost all the time. That's when our character traits will come out, where our goodness or our power under control, it'll all come out. And it's always dealing with people. Now remember this, gentleness is a choice. You choose to be gentle. If you will, you put it on. You wear it. And it's so important for us to understand that. Because gentleness is not something I think that comes naturally. And again, I don't like this, but God will send all kinds of people into our lives to test our character to test our character and see how gentle we really are and how we deal with things. Number two is O, our outlook. Our outlook. As our character begins to change, God molds and shapes our character each and every day. It affects how we see other people, how we view other people. And this is what all the fruits of the spirits are about, really, as we're dealing with people all the time. And so it's kind of like, how do I view other people in my life, or how do you view people in your life? Um, so A is, what's our attitude toward them? What is our attitude toward other people? And then, very importantly, in our action toward them. So as we look at our outlook in life, and we're dealing with people all the time, what is our attitude toward, and I'm going to give you some illustrations, but our attitude toward other people, and what do we do? What's our action? Or what do we actually do? And, uh, and I thought about this, you know, people at work. Uh, I'm very fortunate. 
I only have to deal with myself. So I'm in my office dealing with Bill Hill, and I get the privilege of having my wife with me. And, and so we work together, uh, but I'm blessed. I don't have to go to an office like some folks do. I don't have to do that. What do you, what do you guys do with the computers? You got these Skyping or you're on a computer and you're talking to 97 people and it comes off on your computer and Zooming or whatever. I don't have to do any of that. In fact, I don't even know how to do it. I'm so, let me tell you, I'm so blessed. I have a flip top phone. I can't see anything. People can't text me. I'm completely out of the human race. You know? So my actions and attitudes really change when I flip my phone. Oh, somebody called. Okay, fine. But you see what I'm saying? So we look at the workplace and, and <laughs> forgive me, but dealing with relatives. Um, you probably don't have to deal with relatives. They all, everybody's kind of cool and smooth, but sometime in life we, <laughs> okay, I'm not going any further, but you, you, right, you know what I mean? Sometimes we have to deal with relatives and boy, it's so important how we, how we act toward them, how we view them, our actions, our attitudes. Uh, where you work out, home, school, uh, people at the boat ramp, that's another thing that's very important. <laughs> How do I deal with those who cut in front of me when I'm launching my boat? You gotta be a nice guy, right? Yeah. Back away, just let everything just kind of go as it should. But anyway, we have to remember gentleness, so important, is power under God's control. Let him control your attitude and your actions toward other people because that's how it's going to always happen your attitude is going to be great if you're home all by yourself you don't have to talk to anybody you might get mad at the coffee pot because it's not brewing enough coffee but i mean you don't have anything to worry about right so when we, these things happen they happen because we're dealing with other people period in life are you with me on that so we have to have the right attitude, the right actions. Philippians 2, 3. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourself. With humility consider others better than yourself. Each of you should look not only to your own interest, but also the interest of others. Now notice verse 5. What's it say? Your attitude. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Your attitude and your actions should be just like Jesus Christ. Isn't that cool? Exactly how we're supposed to function in life. And then Matthew 22, I, I think, that should be in your notes too, I hope. Is it? 22, 30. And the second greatest commandment is what? Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. And so when our outlook is under God's control, uh, we become more understanding to other people when it's under God's control. So vitally important in our life. Number three, W is our words. Our words. What we do, what we say. Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The tongue has the power of life or death. Isn't that something? It's a lot of power. If I can use Mike as an example, when he was praying, that's pretty powerful. That's powerful stuff. They were words. There, there were words. But they go out and they have power, don't they? They can bless us or they can make us upset. And you can just see the flow of what he did when he prayed and when he spoke. Are, are, are you all with me on this? Yes. And so our words become very, very important. How we address people, how we talk to people, how we respond to people. And again, your words must be under God's control. That's power because your words are powerful. And I know I can ask this. Well, I'll ask anyway. Don't answer me. But have you ever said something that hurt somebody? And you didn't, then you go back and say, oh gee, I wish I wouldn't have said that. And where's my brain? I should not have said that. Wow, wow, wow. But you did. And it had power. So we want to have all the time 
power under God's control in our words, our actions, what we say. In Ephesians 2.29, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, not yours, their needs, that it may be beneficial to those who listen. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed or healed and sealed for the day of redemption. Wow. Our words need to be under God's control, plain and simple. Yeah. And then write this down too. This is, this is really difficult to do. Think before you... Speak. Have you ever heard that before? Yeah. Think before you speak. In other words, be slow to respond oftentimes. Because what we can say can be either destructive or it can build people up. Just bless them, bless them, bless them. It's kind of like, my, uh, like water. Water, as it's raging through a dam and it's going through these turbines and generators and all that kind of stuff, it produces electricity, doesn't it? I mean, it's just rushing through and the dam and it's flowing and it's going and the generators are moving all these signs. They're, they're just going to town. All positive. But water out of control causes what? Floods. What does it do? Destroys. So our words, if you will, are like water. Under God's control, blesses, encourages, out of control, it does the other thing, doesn't it? It's destructive. So we've got to be careful what we say. I gotta, our words can build people up or they can tear them down. I mean, it's just that simple. Colossians 4, 6, let your conversation always be full of what? Grace. Seasoned with salt so that you may know how to answer everyone everyone and um i, I wrote this down it, it doesn't mean much but uh when you disagree with somebody be tender but don't surrender okay Let's think about that just for a minute it's just something that popped into my brain and some of you don't just yeah you know some of you disagree with or um it could be politics or religion or uh, business it really doesn't matter. But it's up to you and I, not them, to be tender. But again, it's important, don't surrender and don't give up and you don't have to agree with them. Right? And so uh, I've learned in my last couple of years to shut up. Just plain and simple. People will say stuff and they'll go on and on and I'll just go, hmm. That's a safe place to be. <laughs> Just gotta look up. Don't, don't, but don't roll your eyes. Don't, don't do that. <laughs> Just kind of like, eh, all right. It's better just to kind of lay low, if you will. And remember this: a gentle answer turns away wrath, according to Proverbs 15:1. But a harsh word does what? Stirs up anger. Stirs it up. We don't want that. We want to have a gentle spirit, don't we? Under God's control at all times, right? And so, again, I just simply say, keep your words under God's control. Everything you say, everybody that you speak to, and think about it. And number uh, four is E, our expectation. When someone disappoints us, um, are we gentle or judgmental? When somebody really kind of disappoints us, lets us down, uh, how do we treat them? How, what do we think about it? Somebody lets us down, we count on them, we're counting on them, and they let us down. They say they'll do something, they simply don't do it. We want that best for them, and it's just, uh, it's kind of messy. But again, I'm going to tell you right now, whether you like it or not, God will bring those people into your life, period. <laughs> they're going to they're come into your life. And then it's up to you how you respond to them, not being judgmental, nothing. I don't care if they disappoint you, let you down. God has a rhyme and reason. And if that happens, I'm going to just tell you right now, God wants you to become even more gentle. He wants power under control in your life. So he'll bring people into your life to make sure that that will happen. Okay? So now it's God doing this. you got to kind of look at yourself and say, okay, Lord, 
thank you. No, I don't like them, but thank you. I know what you're doing. It's power under control, your spirit under control in my life. So when people don't match my expectations, it's the way it is. In Galatians 6.1, brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently, but watch out. Or you also may be what? Tempted. So watch out. Because you might be the one that is the disappointment in their lives, not them in your life. Romans 5, 15, 7. Uh, pardon me. Romans 15, 7. Accept one another, then just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. Amen? Ah, boy, it's cool. And the last one, five, our, our response, our response to other people, our response to situations. So number one, gentle people are actors, not reactors. You got that? Actors, not reactors. In other words, it's kind of like uh, when someone hurts us, how do we respond? How do we act? Do we react? Or do we act? What do we do? And sometimes we might get caught up in just this reaction and instantly do something where God says, no, I want you to be under control. I want you to be under control. So your response is always, you be the one who acts. It doesn't mean, hip I'm not talking about being hypocrite, being an actor, one who acts and does not react. Huge, huge, huge difference in the two. And then again, I wrote this in my notes this morning. We watch our words. Watch your words. And then again, lastly, be willing to turn your cheek. Turn the other cheek. Be willing to do that. Knowing what's so important, God's in control of everything. In control of everything. We may not understand it. We may not like it. But God is the one in control. Romans 12, 17. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. God will take care of it. Oftentimes he's going to say, hey, get out of the way. Get out of the way. I'll take care of this. I, I want you to have a perfect peace in your heart and in your mind. I want you to be at peace. I'll take care of that. You don't have to. And release all anger. Get rid of it. Do not carry it. Just let it go. I've talked to several people in the last couple of weeks. It's been an interesting time, if you will. Where I had to tell people, just let it go. Just let it go. Do not let it bother you. How can I do that? Well, ask God just to take it away. Just say, I release that stupid thought in Jesus' name. Oh, give me peace in my heart. Give me peace in my mind that transcends all of human understanding. I need peace. I need your joy. I need your love. In verse 20, on the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing so, you will heap burning coals on his head. Now, have the right reason for what you're doing this for. That's what it's saying. Don't do it to have them burn up. You be a blessing. Let God take care of them. Did you hear me? You be the blessing. Let God be the judge, not you. He wants you to be gentle and have his power under control in your lives. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with what? Good, good. So very simply, you might want to write this down 55 times. Gentleness is power under God's control. Power under God's control. Amen? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your love. 
your joy, your mercy and grace. And Father, thank you for everyone here. And Father, we're praying for miracles. Yes, miracles. Signs, wonders, and miracles to follow the wonderful, powerful, and awesome name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, uh, as I think about everybody that's going through a lot of different things today, keep them pain-free, encourage them, bless them, and give them perfect peace. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.